wants to talk about it. God is so good. Amen. So we're going to talk about giftings today. We're going to, one of the things I didn't tell the leaders, I want you to be prepared for it at the end, as we're going to do an impartation time after we get done talking about the gifts. So, you're going to, so I'm going to talk about the gifts. You're going to hear some testimonies of, of those with gifts because we want you to hear, uh, and then we want to hear from you. We want to hear from you with your giftings. Amen? And so um, there's three Let's start here. There's three areas of gifting. Okay, if you have a Bible, I'm going to turn to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Verse, uh, chapter 12 and chapter, well, chapter 12, 13, and 14 are really your, your giftings chapters in the scripture that talk a lot about the Holy Spirit giftings. And I'm going to start right at the beginning of chapter 12. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I don't want you to be ignorant. I would that you would be ignorant. Right away the Holy Spirit was saying, I don't want you to be ignorant of the gifts. I want to talk to you about them. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus a curse, and that no man can say Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but the same God which works all. Let me stop there. There's, there's three things mentioned right there. And what it's talking about, there's three areas of giftings. Okay, there's the manifest gifts, there's the spiritual gifts, and there's the office gifts. Okay, the manifest gifts are listed in Roman, uh, Romans chapter 12. And the, the manifest gifts are each of you are given a gift that represents your personality from God. Amen? And so some of you have a prophetic personality. Some of you are mercy personalities. Some of you are just giver personalities, okay? And there's different gifts there. We're not really going to get heavy into that at all tonight. Uh, but that's a whole area we can do an entire teaching on maybe another time, okay? And there's the office gifts. There's the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. Okay, those are, that's the operations that he's talking about there. The operating of the church of Jesus Christ, okay? When Jesus Christ came, he died on the cross, he saved the world from sin, and he, he started the church. And within that church, you know, he has, he has, uh, he has all kinds of things going on. He, he, he's, he has the administration of his kingdom upon this earth through us. And that's the reason why he calls leaders and he, and he, call, and he gives out gifts. And all the things that he's doing, let me say this, it isn't so we can hang it on the wall and say that we have it. Amen? It's so that we can do the works that he's called us to do. Amen? And God has a lot of work for us to do. The, you know, the, there are so many people out there that need to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. They need to be saved. I mean, whenever we complain, you know, be careful that we don't complain. When we hear the news, we're so quick to complain. Okay? The thing is, we're the answer. We are God's answer to what's happening because we're His church. We're His people. You know, how shall they know unless someone goes and speaks? Amen? Which is why you have preachers and evangelists and teachers and all the different things you have. We have to go and do our part, and we're His hands and feet on this earth. And so the giftings are meant uh, to empower us. To do when you look at Acts, you know, if any time you want to get into this whole study, read the book of Acts. If ever was a more disjointed group of people, was the apostles after Jesus Christ was crucified. Amen. They didn't. They couldn't find their own tail. Amen. You know, they didn't know what to do. And when they didn't know what to do, they did the most important thing they could do. They went and prayed together. Amen. And then, and in the unity of prayer. The Holy Ghost fell on them. Amen. He told them to go and pray. They did. And told them, he said, you go and pray until you be endued with power on high. And from the moment they received the gift of the Holy Spirit, bam, they changed. They became, they, Peter became this mighty man of God and preached on a really tremendous sermon. Okay. And, and a lot of the things we call the baptism of the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 2 came about. Okay. But all of that, I say this to say this. He empowered them to do the work 
And the Bible says within a few short years, the testimony of the unbelievers was this. These guys turned the world upside down. These guys turned the world upside down. Twelve guys in a room turned the world upside down. Amen? Why? Because they needed power. So what does that tell you? It wasn't about them. It was about God. Amen? So when we do things, it's not about us. It's about God. God empowers us to do things. Amen? And so, uh, so he's given us gifts. And uh, there are, uh, we just talked about uh, the manifestation gifts and the office gifts. There's also the, the power gifts, the, the nine gifts, which we'll get into in just a second. Okay? But verse 7, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man and woman to profit withal. To one is given the Spirit of the word of wisdom, and to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. To another faith by that same Spirit. To another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another the working of miracles. To another prophecy. To another discerning of spirits. To another, divers kinds of tongues, and to another, the interpretation of tongues. But all of these work that same, self-same spirit, dividing to every man as he sees, as, to every man severely as he will, or as he sees fit. Okay? Verse 13, For by one spirit we are all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, we have been made to drink unto one spirit. There's one spirit, there's one church, there's one God. But he gives different gifts. He, he's very giving and hands out gifts, okay? Now, I'm going to pop over to chapter 14, okay? Now, verse 1. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts. He's telling you, does the word desire, want. You should want spiritual gifts. Why should you want spiritual gifts? To do the work of the Spirit. But rather that you may prophesy, for he that speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not unto men, but unto God, for no man understands him. However, albeit in the spirit he speaks mysteries. He that prophesies speaks unto men to edification, exhortation, and comfort. If you haven't already underlined that in your Bible, you really need to. Edification, exhortation, one of the most important things that the gifts do are those three things. They edify, they exhort, and they comfort. And if they're not building us up, if they're not cheering us up, inspiring us on, and helping us to move forward, they're, they're probably not from God. Amen? The one caveat from that is God is corrective. Okay? Alright? And corrective is supposed to build you up if it's from God. Amen? If it's truly from God, it will bless you because it's the right thing at the right time. The Bible talks about in Proverbs, apples of gold and pitchers of silver. If it's a word from God and it's corrected, then you, and you know it's from God, it's not from man. Amen? It's, it builds you up. It does edify you. It does do those things. But it needs to be those kind of things. It needs to occur. Anytime we're tearing someone down, anytime we're embarrassing someone, anytime we, that's God, the Holy Spirit. Amen? That's really more of a spirit of Antichrist, and we need to be careful of that. Another thing that he talks about, let me say this, you need to test the spirits whether they be of God. Okay? Test the spirits whether they be of God, especially when you're hearing things. Okay? And I, and I just felt like the Lord told me to throw this in there. I wasn't planning to, but um, how do you know when you're hearing from God and when you're hearing from another spirit? Let me say this, there's three places you can hear from. You can be hearing from yourself. You can be hearing from God. And you can be hearing from a demon or the devil. Amen? How do you know the difference? Amen? That's one thing, especially in, in the utterance kiss when you're speaking. You need to get good at that. You need to get good at discerning when you're hearing from God. Okay? And discerning. Now I'll say this. Anytime you really are questioning, one of the easiest ways to sift that out, if it's coming from God and that is if you're hearing a voice, who is Jesus Christ? If you ever meet somebody you think is demon-possessed, I do prison ministry, and I've been doing it for a lot of years. Whenever I meet a demon-possessed person, I ask them the same question. Who is Jesus Christ? 
The Bible tells you right there that no spirit could claim that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Spirit. And I'm telling you, you will rip the mask off of a demon every time you ask who Jesus Christ is. But I'll tell you what, when it's the Holy Spirit, he'll start talking about Jesus Christ. Man, he'll talk about the love of the Lord and the miracle and the things of the Lord. And he'll definitely get into the Word of God. Amen? Because the Holy Spirit, you know, he's the author of the Word. He'll definitely give you the Word, okay? And so, but we need to get good at that. So if, you, if, if you're hearing things and you're ever questioning, there's two areas. One, get good counsel. The Bible says in a multitude of counsel, there is safety, okay? So you need to have a team of people around you, especially in the beginning, that, can, that you can bounce things off of. Hey, am I hearing God? Is this, does this sound like God to you? Amen? And at the same time, I can learn to discern, learn to test the spirits whether they be of God. Okay, let's move on. And now this, this first part of 1 Corinthians is talking about speaking. Okay, now listen to this. Verse 4, he that speaks in an unknown tongue edifies himself. But he that prophesies edifies the church. I would that you all spoke with tongues, but rather that you prophesy. For greater is he that prophesies than he that speaks with tongues, except he interpret, that the church may receive edifying. So what's the Holy Spirit saying there? The most important thing is building the church up. Building the church up. So the Holy Spirit was telling us, don't be enamored by just somebody doing a gift. It needs to build up the church. It needs to edify us. It needs to help us to grow. Amen? And to build us up. And if it isn't, it isn't. Now let me say this. Uh, we'll get into the to tongues. Notice he starts out talking about tongues. Okay? Why? Because when you look at, at Acts, there was this whole thing about speaking in tongues. And so um, there's been a lot of miscommunication and a lot of bad teaching about speaking in tongues. Okay? And I'll say this because the Bible tells us that there's different kinds of tongues. And it's telling you right here that there's different kinds of tongues. Okay? Let me, let me read that again. I would that you speak in tongues, but rather you prophesy. Verse 6. Now, brethren, I come to you speaking with tongues, that what shall I profit you except I speak to you by revelation, by knowledge, by prophesying, or by doctrine? Okay? For even things without life-giving sound, whether pipe or harp, except they be distinction in the sound. Unless you understand what's happening, he said, how shall it be known what is pipe or harp? For if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself for the battle? So likewise... Except ye utter the tongue, words easy to understand, how shall we know what is just spoken? Verse 10, there, are, there may be, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world, and none of them is without signification or meaning. Okay? Verse 12, even so, for as much as you're zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. So ask the Lord when you're asking for gifts, help me build up the church. Help me build up my brothers and sisters. Help me encourage. Help me, you know, so we're asking, he's telling you how to ask for the gifts. Don't just say, Lord, I want to heal. Give me a healing gift. Why, does he, why do you want a healing gift? Lord, I want, I want to see people free. I want to see chains come off. I, I, want to, I want to experience that with you, Lord God, that I'm, I want to help people. Amen? One of the greatest things I see, especially in this healing tree ministry, is is you see the people that are in the healing side, they want to help people. They have such a big heart to go and see people set free. Amen? And, and every time you rub elbows with them, it's so encouraging to see how much they care about the folks. It's not just about the gifting. Are you with me? They're always talking about the things that get done. Amen? Now let me just say that we want to see things get done in the church. Amen? And now, the Bible says in Proverbs, how do you know a false gift? A false gift is clouds and wind, but no rain, the Bible says. Amen? Clouds and wind, but no rain. What does that mean? It means it sounds really good, but it doesn't do anything. Amen? A true gift from the Lord goes forth and it accomplishes that which it's supposed to do. It frees people. It helps people. Amen? It does what it's called to do. And that's one thing we can know. I want to also underline where it talks about praying in tongues, okay? 
It says, he that speaks in an unknown tongue edifies himself. Okay? So let me say this about people that are getting kind of new into the Holy Spirit. When you're, if you have a prayer language and you're praying, that's not the thing that should be... Okay, I, I get kind of... It, it's irksome when you hear people doing that in a way that's too loud and too, you know, and people don't know what you're saying, okay? It really shouldn't be that much. Okay? I'm just kind of being a little corrective there, okay? That if you're praying in an unknown tongue and you're using your, quote, prayer language, that's to edify you. That's to build you up. That's not to build up the church, okay? Because the Bible's telling you right there, it doesn't build up the church. They don't know what you're saying. Are you with me? But the Bible says your spirit is praying. Are you with me? And you don't know how to pray as you ought, those scriptures say. And so one of the reasons why the Lord gave us this is that when you're speaking, you're praying in tongues, your spirit is praying directly to the Lord, but it's not for the church. Are you with me? Now, the speaking in tongues gift, we'll get into it in just a few minutes, uh, more of a definition. The speaking in tongues gift, when you see it in Acts, What's it doing? Matter of fact, uh, uh, Scott and I were talking about this before. One of the things that happened was people heard their own languages. And one of the things that Scott pointed out that's a really great thing to point out is a bunch of people with different languages. One guy was speaking. And, a and they all heard their language, the people that didn't know the language of the people. So imagine the miracle that is happening there. Imagine 10 people with 10 different languages. And they're all hearing their language from one person. You, you can't make that up. Amen. You can't fake that. Okay, that is a miracle from God. That is a gift that the Lord, that gift that the Lord gives. There's other places where, and you know, I don't know if you've ever seen this, but I've, I've been in services where I've seen somebody come forward and say, I'm from Ethiopia, or I'm from over here, you know, in this country, and you just spoke my dialect. I've been in services where they were like, they were like I didn't, you know, it's almost a dead language. And people heard the language being spoken in that, and that, and it brought faith. And almost always, when they, now I'll say this, it's not just, hey, I heard something. They always heard the word of the Lord. And nine out of ten times, and by the way, I've never seen it where somebody who heard it and was unsaved didn't get saved. Didn't get saved. Amen. Uh, you know, and you'll, you'll hear a miracle is happening, things like this. So this is why God uses this gift. Again, it's doing something. It just, it's not just making us go, oh, wow, people are speaking in tongues. There's things that are specifically happening. Now let's get into, I want to give a quick definition to each of the gifts so that you have it. Because I know it's very important for me when I got, I'm reading, I got this list from a guy named Kenneth Hagin. And tremendous meaning of God. I got this in the 70s. I've been using it ever since because I just felt the list was so good. And you're going to notice that up here on the screen, uh, that Scott also had some stuff that had this information on here. So let me read it. Okay, now there's three sets of gifts. Okay, there is the revelation gifts. There are the power gifts and the utterance gifts. And they're in three sets of three. Okay. There's three revelation gifts, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and discerning of spirits. Those are the revelation gifts. The power gifts, the three power gifts, are the gift of faith, the gift of healing, and the gift of miracles. Okay? And the three utterance gifts are the gift of prophecy, the gift of tongues, and the gift of interpretation of tongues. And you'll notice I just read that list from, from 1 Corinthians. Okay? So I didn't make this up. Kenneth Hagin didn't make it up. The, this list comes straight out of Scripture. Okay, Now let me give you a definition for each of these gifts. Let's start with the uh, three revelation gifts. The word of wisdom. The word of wisdom. Revelation of the mind and purpose of God. Knowledge that is rightly applied. Okay, I'm going to say that again. Revelation of the mind and purpose of God. What we're going to do here once I finish reading this list and giving you the definitions is we're going to talk, we're getting, you're going to hear testimonies of those 
could believe they have these gifts and how they started with them. So you have a little bit to go on, okay? The next one is the word of knowledge. The word of knowledge, revelation of the things that are now or, or have been. Supernatural insight or understanding of the circumstances by revelation. I'll read it one more time. Give revelation of the things that are now or have been. Supernatural insight or understanding. I told the group, have you ever been in a service and, and a, a prophet will line people up and he'll tell you things that he could not possibly know about you? How many of you have ever met Larry Randolph? Larry Randolph was at Life Center uh, Church not too long ago, and he has that he has a word of knowledge gift, and he'll tell you things you cannot possibly know about you. He'll, he'll read your address. He'll tell you things that uh, he couldn't possibly. That's a word of knowledge, okay? Discerning of spirits gives insight into the spiritual world. That's 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 kind of simplistic, but I'm going to go with that for now. Gives insight into the spiritual world. Okay. Now the three power gifts: the gift of faith. Gift of faith, a supernatural endowment by the Spirit, whereby that which is uttered or desired by a person or spoken by God shall come to pass. Okay? Supernatural endowment by the Spirit, whereby that which is uttered or desired by a person or spoken by God shall come to pass. Okay? So Jesus, he prays over a person to be set to be healed, and they were healed. Jesus prayed over a demoniac, you know, demon-possessed person, and that person was delivered. That is a uh, gift of faith, okay? Because he had the faith to do it, and it happened. All right? Gift of healing. Supernatural healing of infirmity of disease without any natural source. That's a supernatural healing, okay? Supernatural healing of infirmity of disease without a natural source. Gift of miracles. Intervention in the ordinary course of nature. Intervention in the ordinary course of nature. <clears throat> Love these definitions because it makes it so much plainer. Okay? Gift of prophecy. Supernatural utterance in a known tongue of, to those who hear it. Meaning you're, you're speaking from God, but you understand what's being said. Okay? That's a prophetic word. Okay? Supernatural utter okay, gift of tongue. Supernatural utterance in an unknown tongue to those that hear. Okay? You don't know what's being said at all, but it's supposed to be coming from the Lord. Okay? It's coming from the Lord. So it's a gift of tongues. Interpretation of tongues. Supernatural explanation of that which is spoken in an unknown tongue in the known tongue of those that are hearing. So, someone hears a word that is spoken in tongues, and God gives them the interpretation of that, even though they don't speak that language. Are you with me? So, they don't naturally speak it supernaturally. God gave them that word. Okay. Before I move on, does anybody need any of those repeated? I know some of you write them down. Okay. So, there's three sets of three revelation gifts, power gifts, and utterance gifts. Okay. Now, what I want to do. Uh, Transition though. My, I'm going to tell you my gift. I'm going to tell you how I get started, and Harry's going to come up, and uh, and some of the other leaders are going to come up, and then when I want to, anytime after the leaders will come up, any of you who want to come up and share your gifting, we want to hear about your gifting because I think it helps when we hear how it started, how did it get going, what did you do with it. Let me say this, okay? Um, years and years ago, I was in prison, and the very first time. God ever spoke to me. Uh, I got saved when I was a kid. And uh, my father was a psychiatrist who was an atheist at the time. And my mom got spirit filled. And but I ended up being a problem handful for her. And I went to live with my father who would not let me go to church. He thought those people, he, it was a charismatic church. He said, those people are crazy. You may not go there. He told me I could go to any church I wanted to as long as I didn't go to a spirit filled church. But I told him that was the only place I felt God, and so I stopped going. Now, if you'd have asked me all those years if I believed in Jesus, I said, I would have told you I did. But I got into the 70s, this is the 70s, so I, that I was in the feel good, if it feels good, do it time of life. 
And so I started smoking pots, and you know, I was sleeping with my girlfriend, and all those things, because no one had ever discipled me. I got saved, and that's it. Are you with me? So I didn't, I, you know, I, I, was re I read the Bible once in the blue moon. I just knew I believed, and I thought that was okay. Are you with me? And so it wasn't until I was in prison that I realized I was in trouble. Like, boy, I have messed up. And I believed that I could not come back to the Lord. And it was a man who came to me and sat me down when I was in prison and told me that I could come back to the Lord. Why do you think you can't come back to, oh, you, something in the Bible, someone told me one time that once you've been there, you can't come back. And he said, dude, you've been lied to, that's the devil. And as long as you're a living human being, you can come back to the Lord. At any time, as long as you're alive. And he led me to the Lord at that time, okay? Well, I was struggling with it. I didn't, I didn't do it all in one thing. And I was in my cell, and I was, and I was having a bad, I was having the worst possible day. And everyone in my family had disowned me the day before. Are you with me? I lost everybody at one time. And at the same time, this guy was trying to talk to me. Are you with me? So I get a care package from home, and I poured it out in my cell. And the last thing that fell out was one of those little Gideon red New Testaments. You guys ever seen those? That they handed them out when I was in high school. I never opened it. I stuck it in a drawer at home. My stepmother thought, well, he can use this and stuck it in the care package. And all this stuff, paper, pens, chocolate, socks, falls out. And on top of all of it is this little red New Testament. And I stared at it for a good 15 minutes. And I told you, I just got disowned by my family. And I said, I said, man, there's nobody in the cell. I'm all by myself. And I said, my friends don't want me. My family doesn't want me. And I don't, God doesn't even want me. He speaks to me for the first time. And he says, oh, yes, I do. I've always wanted you, but not on your terms, on my terms. This exact first word that was spoke to me. And I, and I just blubbered out crying. I said, Lord, if you can want me after all that I have done, I'm yours. And I, and I got radically, radically saved. Are you with me? And everything began to change in my life. They moved me to another place. Uh, I said, Lord, if you're going to be a Christian, teach me what I have to know. Two weeks later, I was moved to another prison that had church three times a day. And people were walking up to me, handing me books. The Lord says you're supposed to learn this. The Lord says you're supposed to learn this. And everything were questions I had been given to the Lord. Each one was an answer to those questions. And I knew the Lord was talking to me. Are you with me? But he didn't speak to me again. For another, till I got out of prison. So he talks to me when I was in, I got out of prison. And one day, I'm there, this is 1990. By the way, this first time was in 1983 when I got saved. Uh, and then in 1990, I'm walking along. And I don't know if you guys remember, there was a big pro-life conference in D.C. in 1990. Huge, huge on the mall conference. And I'm, I'm walking along thinking about uh, abortion, about how bad it is. And the Lord speaks to me. And I mean, he knocked me down to speak to me. He said to me something that started me with evangelism. He said, there's something worse than abortion. And I said, what could be worse than abortion? He said, a soul going to hell. He goes, because know this, a soul that goes to hell is lost to me forever. Is lost to me forever. And I see every single one. He says, every soul in hell. He goes, you know, I don't let the angels see them, but I see them. And he said, and, he, and I'm crying. He's talking. And he's crying, talking, crying. Yeah. <laughs> he, said, he said, the most important thing. And he said, my son. And I saw Jesus come in with a lamb. He says, every day, my son comes into me with one lamb at least. And he says, because he comes in each day, I don't judge the world. He goes, but there's going to come a day where he doesn't walk into my chamber with a lamb, and I will judge the world on that day. And he goes, but because I love the world so much, and I don't want one to perish, I'm going to hold the judgment back and give him every chance to save everyone. And that was the second time he spoke to me. And it was funny because I went and shared it with my pastor. And I got rebuked. And the pastor said, 
God does not, there's no such thing as New Testament prophets. You're hearing from demons. And I just sat there and go, okay, a demon just told me about lost souls. Right? Now, I wasn't very smart. I was pretty new into the faith, but I was pretty sure a demon wouldn't tell me about lost souls. Okay? And then I met Dave Hess, and Dave Hess said to me, he was an assistant pastor of the Christ community, he said to me, man, I'm not going to say anything negative about your church, your pastor, but you're, you are in the wrong church for you. Okay? There's probably a lot of people that need to be where they are, but you need to be somewhere else. Because the Lord is trying to teach you something, and you need to be, to be what God can teach you. So he told me about Word Fellowship, which is now Life Center. And he said, Charles Stock is the pastor over there. He's been there just a few years, but he teaches people in the prophetic. I'll give him a call, let him know you're coming. Sit down and talk to him, and I bet you he'd be willing to take you by the arm and teach you about the prophetic. And I went over there, and I got the, the, the first day on there, the Holy Spirit hit me, knocked me to the ground. I knew I was supposed to be there. And I met Charles. He walked up and prophesied over me. He said, the Lord has called me. He didn't even know who I was yet. I hadn't, I hadn't told him my name, who I was, total stranger. He said, the Lord told me to tell you that you're here to learn. And you're supposed to be here. And we're going to teach you some things and do some things together. And then I told him who I was. And he said, oh, yeah, Daddy has told me to come over here. And I knew the Lord was directing me. Are you with me? Now, let me say this. Then the Lord turned my whole world upside down. Because all the things he was teaching me, I, I, and here's the, I was very much a conservative. I was way over here, conservative. Are you with me? And Life Center was very much in the middle. Are you with me? Very, and they were talking about love all the time. Love. And where I was, I loved to talk about truth. Truth, truth, truth. And they were talking about love. Finding the love of God and giving it away. Are you with me? And so I, I said, I'm leaving. I'm not standing here. This is not for me. And the Lord spoke to me the third time. And the Lord said, I brought you here to learn under this, this teacher, under this place. I brought you here to stay. And I'm praying about that. I told my wife about it. I'm walking out of the church, and a guy I've never met, and I haven't met since, by the way. I've never seen him at the church since. He walks up to me and he says, are you Jay Flanagan? I said, yeah. He said, the Lord has a word for you. He said, you're thinking about leaving the church, but you're to stay because the Lord has you here to learn under this teacher. <laughs> I was like, no! No! But I did. And can I tell you, I, I, years later, I'm ordained under that church. I've been there for 27 years. And uh, God has done all kinds of different things. But I'm telling you, it was a tough road to hoe. Are you with me? But the Lord began teaching me and giving me the instruction that I needed in the prophetic there, and I got trained, okay? And one of the things he, you know, he taught me right off the bat was um, get a batting average on yourself and be very, very honest with yourself when you're missing it. Because it's like batting. He said, you know, do you know the greatest batter of all time was also the strikeout king of all time? Did you know that? And I was like, no, I didn't know that. He goes, so you're, you're going to swing and you're going to miss. It doesn't mean that you're not hearing from God, okay? It means you're going to learn. He goes, so before you can ever be a prophet, he said these to me, and I've been teaching it ever since. You have to be a prophet in training. And as a prophet in training, you're probably going to miss more than you hit, okay? But just recognize, be, write it down, take note of it, and, and learn all you can, both from when you miss, and when you hit, and what the differences are, and you'll be, you'll get better at hitting. You'll get better at hitting. And he gave me, he said, you can come to me every time. And this was years and years ago. And uh, I, I, he helped me come up with a group of leaders that I could talk to, and I would bounce it off of them, and they would help me discern when I was hearing from God. And he told me, be willing to hear from us, you're not hearing from God. And he said, he gave me something I can't tell you, you, he said, if you're not willing to hear from the leaders, you're not hearing from God, you're not going to grow. And that is really good testament, okay? That he said, by the way, God gives grace to the humble, but he resists the power. So you've got to be willing to hear that you're not hearing from God, okay? And so I just throw that out that 
if you're getting, if, if you've been giving a gift or you have a new gift, uh, you know, it takes time to discern it. It takes time to work it, to build it up and get to a place where you feel confident in that gift. Now know this, there's misuses of those gifts, okay? There are people that use, can I tell you, um, I, I had a friend of mine um, that got into the prophetic, and he walked up to a girl at college, and he said, the Lord told me to tell you that you're going to be my wife. <laughs> and you know what she said? The Lord didn't tell me. <laughs> you know what? But here, and here, they had talked, obviously. He, he didn't do this the first day they met. Uh, she had, he had, he kind of set her up for a, this conversation later on because he said to her earlier on, hey, have you ever heard from God before? And she said, no. And he plugged that away. Okay? So when she said, God didn't tell me, she goes, ah, you've never heard from God. But I have. I hear from God and you don't. And that didn't make her listen to him anymore. <laughs> she went to the school and said, you need to keep him from talking to me because he's getting weird. This was a Bible school, by the way. This wasn't just a regular, this was a Bible. They sat him down and they said, we don't know if you have a gift of prophecy or not, but you're misusing it if you do. And, and you're missing it because you're trying to use it for your own selfish gain. Stop. He ended up getting kicked, this guy, he got kicked out of that school because he did not listen to the counsel. Are you with me? I hear from God. I hear from God. Are you with me? The rest of his life, he's dead now, the rest of his life, he told me he'd heard from God, even though he got kicked out of the school over this situation. Are you with me? And so it's very important that you not hold on to things. Let me say this. If you get a word from God, whose word is it? It's the Lord's. Okay? But what we do is it becomes a part of us when we get the word. And so when people don't receive it, you feel like they didn't receive me. And that's a misuse, okay? That, that's an immature place to be with words, okay? If people don't receive the word, they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting your word. And part of you receiving, you know, one of the things my pastor said to me that was when I said, can I share words with you when I get them? He said, on one condition, as long as I can then tell you if I don't think it's the Lord. He goes, if I can't do that, no, you can't share words with me. But as long as I can discern it for me and tell you yes or no, I think it's the Lord, then yes, you can come to me all day long. Are you with me? And I'm telling you that that's, that's a good place to be. So we need to have humility in the midst of our gift. You know? So here, I want to bring up Harry now, share some of his gifts. Amen. And, uh, and we'll just we'll keep going that way. Scott, can you fire up that thing again? And, uh, projector? Yeah. During worship, you had one particular scene there. Um, and I, and, I, and I, I don't know how to tell you to get there. But it was early on in worship, and it was looking from clouds to the earth. Do you know which one I'm saying? If you don't, that's okay. We'll just go on. Yeah, at first I didn't realize that's what it was. Not that one. Huh? Not that one. No, it's another one. Yeah. It's um, actually looking down from the clouds to the earth. Maybe I'm the only one that saw it. <laughs> Which wouldn't surprise me. Well, Were your eyes open or if closed? If you can find that, if you, it doesn't matter. If you, get, if you see stuff, you see stuff. Um, I, I actually had my first encounter with the Holy Spirit when someone just busted into my life and said to me, the Holy Spirit is with you and soon you're going to be a Christian. And um, 
Everything changed in my life from that day onward. And, and, and that was my first encounter. That was a prophetic way to start in the kingdom, um, which I kicked against and resisted for a while, though the spirit was immediately on me and I had all kinds of experiences. When that happened, from that day on, it seemed like every time I turned around, I kept walking into God. And, um, no, that's not, I love that. That's, that works. Except that I want the other one that I saw. I don't know how to it. That's the puppet right there. That's it. This is a prophetic word for everyone in terms of mindset. When you work in the prophetic, that's what's happening. Your view is from heaven to the earth. That's a prophetic expression. Whoever took that picture, they got a good picture because um, that's God. It's more than that, but I just wanted you to see that because that really captivates what's going on. You're seeing from the heavens, really from even a higher heaven, to the earth, and you're seeing right through it as, except that you're on the ground. See that? If you look down there, you're standing on one of those blades of grass. You see that? Except that you're seeing from another angle. That's really what's happening. Harry, just to let you know, I saved that photo that I found online. I titled it, Heaven Meets Earth. <laughs> so, that's a good description. That's right. That's good. Thank you. I'll remember that. So when I met the Lord, that's where it began. And then I, I kept having things like, for example, um, you just have to understand how I started and who I was and, and how high I was getting all the time. And so I really struggled against, uh, I struggled with this message that, that Jesus was the Lord, though I knew it was true, it really scared me because of a lot of reasons. But, but I would do drugs, and I'd get into imagination. I was a philosophy major, you know. Something that's head from earth into the clouds instead of from the clouds into the earth. And um, there may be another description, too. But, uh, so, one night I was sitting in my apartment, and I was just, oh, I was writing poetry at the time, and I was just getting, I was all so full of myself, you know. I was imagining different things. And suddenly, the Holy Spirit speaks to me again. I, I recognize that now. At the time, I just thought I was whacked. And, 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 and so I was sitting there, and, and here this thought powers down on me. And it say, says, oh, so you want to dare to dream? Well, dare to dream about this. God. I'm trying to get away from this. You have no idea. Every time I'm turning around, there's something that's going on. I don't feel good. I'm all spaced out for a lot of reasons. I go to the infirmary. I sit there. The day I go into the infirmary, this is at school. This place is just jam-packed. Jam-packed with people. It's never full of people. That day it was full of people. I sat down and I'm waiting. Again, I hear these voices. <laughs> the voices. So, I already know I'm over the, I'm below it, you know. So I hear, he says, Harry, listen to me. The Spirit of God is on the earth calling forth his children. Listen to me. Silence. And I'm looking around at people thinking, oh man, I've gone too far. I'm toast, I'm doing things. Harry, the Spirit of God is on the earth calling forth his children. Listen to me. I got up and ran out thinking I was just, I just, I didn't know what to do. I was afraid. Then I started to realize that God was really tracking me as if he didn't give evidence to me. And, and, but it's actually continued from that until now. So for my experience, it's just the way God has worked in my life. Everybody doesn't have that experience. It's just so I've learned. And 
Um, so eventually I started going to a church. I made it into a church, which took some time because um, I was really paranoid about churches. And so I, I went into this church, was, and in that church there was a, a movement at that time. It was called the Jesus People. And I was sitting there, and every Tuesday and Thursday nights we had our we had the Jesus people night meetings of worship and praise and instruction and stuff. And so as I was sitting there one night, suddenly God spoke to me to give a message to the people who were around me. And I'm thinking, you got the wrong one. I mean, I, no one told me to give a message here. I thought what they were doing, people would speak out in prophetic words, and I wasn't going to say what was going on. And the Lord said to me, if you don't speak, you're a blood clot in the body of Christ. Whoa. Wow. I thought, get out of my face, man. <laughs> this, is, this is serious stuff. And so I started to learn that when God gives you something, it's so that you will share it. It's not so that you get up and just speak and have your say. But the moment that that word is there, if you learn it, and, and we have to, or there's a tempering that goes on. But when you have that word, it's important to share it. Sometimes it, you might want to, if you want to, you're not sure, you can just stand up and say, well, this is what I think, but I could be wrong, you only to test this. Mm -hmm. That will soften it, and uh, you'll be able to walk in it, and it'll be a lot better. Or you can go to someone and say, now look, if you just see somebody on the street, be careful. Make sure, like, that girl took a real chance when she spoke to me. The Holy Spirit's with you, and soon you're going you're gonna to be a Christian. She took a big chance to say that. But she was so in love with God, she didn't know what she was doing. <laughs> that's, and that's the truth. She, she, was a, she was a stone hippie before the summer, and then she got baptized in the Spirit when they, it, it was a beach ministry day baptized her in the water from the ocean and she came out speaking in tongues. I don't know whether they expected that, but that's what happened to her. And from that time on she was just kinda she lost it. You know, and she was just in love with Jesus. And that's how that's who she was. The prophetic gift is really um, <coughs> the question is how do you know that you're hearing from God? If no prophecy of scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation, then no prophecy is a matter of just one's interpretation. And therefore, when you are given a word, that word not only needs to be given, but it needs to be tested, and you have to be willing to have somebody say, you're off base, you're wrong, you're not, you're not hearing correctly, or the timing could be different, or whatever you have. You have to be in a submission to the body of Christ and to leadership in the body of Christ. That's safe. And there's another thing that you have to be willing to be in submission to, and that is don't make up doctrine that disagrees with Scripture. That's right. Amen. Period. The one thing I've learned is the more time I've, I spend in the world, the more I become familiar with how God thinks. So that when a thought pops into my mind, I can, uh, I can recognize, oh yeah, it's from God. And sometimes I don't have to think about that comparison. It's just so real. It's so, you can, you just kind of like, this is Harold. You know, Harold's a word from God. You can take that to the bank. So, hearing from God, there's an assurance, there's something that's, that's concrete that just doesn't exist in the normal sense of things. The scripture says, not only, the, our, our Bible says, spiritual gifts. The scriptures, in, and I'm not a Greek scholar, but in the Greek, it's spirituals. It just says spirituals. It doesn't say spiritual gifts. It just says spirituals. And so what happens is that we become familiar with how the spirit thinks in the places in which the spirit thinks. And 
and he then implants things all this. We just become aware of things. Just suddenly, you're, you're involved in something, you're doing something. Suddenly, you're aware. It's just a little different than it was before. You have a different perspective that you didn't expect. You weren't thinking about it. Boom. Here it comes. And sometimes, it, it, God gives you a word. It's a more thoughtful word if you've been praying through something. Say you're praying for the nation. Suddenly the Lord will move you back to that view. And you'll start to see different kinds of plans in action. And you'll be aware something is afoot. You'll either see God and his plans, or you'll see the enemy and his plans, so that you can arm the body of Christ, so that we can become engaged in prayer. Always, 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 those words that are given to us. Sometimes they're, it can be a personal word, though I don't want to say that's prophecy, but it, but he'll speak to you personally. But often, almost always, when a word of, is given, it is for the very purpose, as the scripture says, for the building up of the body of Christ. Or the word has no purpose. It's to have an effect. Even the description of the gift of ministry says, their purpose is not for those ministries, specific ministries, pastor, evangelist, but they're actually, God has used those and equipped people to equip us so that we can do the work of ministry. So the, the giftings are for the growth of the body of Christ. It's always, it's always for the body. It's always for the body, and so you can test it. Excuse my voice, I'm not sure what's going on here. But, um, <coughs> I don't know how this happened. I'll let it be this the final word. I don't know how this happened. I didn't ask God for the prophetic gifting. And there are other gifts that I, that I walk in, but I don't know how this happened. Because I was against him. And he just put his finger on me and said, buddy, that's it. And he changed my whole world. And, um, and, and it doesn't seem like he's going to stop. Yes. <laughs> and I'm a very crazy. God, yeah. And then we underline a couple of things that, that Harry was alluding to, too. We say this. If you get a word, write it down. Some words are not for now. Okay? So be willing to share them. And if you hear no, but your spirit is still saying yes to you, make sure you've written it down and hold on to it because God, if it is God, he'll resurrect it at a later date. Because what it means is you were given something that's not for now. Are you with me? Everything is not for now. You need to hear that. It's a really good thing to hear. Every word that you're given, just because you get it, doesn't mean it's for right now. That's a lesson that every prophetic person needs to learn. We start thinking in the beginning. If you're sitting in a church service and you get a word, you feel like, I'm going to run up to the pastor and he's got to give it right now. Are you with me? And that's not the, that's not the case. And you'll go to the pastor sometimes and say, no, I don't, I don't bear witness with that. And it's not from, but I've done that. And two years later, I got the Lord resurrected. That same word that the pastor said no to, I went up, gave it to him. And he didn't even remember he said no two years earlier, but he was like, oh man, that's good. Had me give that word. Are you with me? And so things uh, things are not always for now. So hold, so it's a very good idea. Those of you that are getting prophetic, or, or write down all your words. Also, you can learn from your words and make a note on them about reception. Keep, keep track of what's happening with that word. Are you with me? Was it received? Was it not? Why not? What did you learn from that, okay? Trust me, you need to have your own little notebook of that kind of stuff. I want to bring up Terry right now, okay? Uh, and we're going to be, I'm going to, I'm, I'm, we're going to be, we're underlining gifts, okay? So you do, you've heard a couple about prophetic. Terry's also prophetic. Terry also has a gift of healing, amen? I just, I, I did want to tell one prophetic um, testimony before I went to healing. But, um, and I'm going to be really quick because I don't talk a long time up front anyway. <laughs> so
So, prophetic. One time, I remember the first time that I knew that I had a prophetic gifting was that I had, um, I was in a church in Bangor, Maine, and I actually just came back from a missions trip, and I had walked by one of the ladies, and I said to her, I said, you know, Michelle, I said, um, God wants you to get ready for a spiritual promotion. She goes, oh my gosh. And I'm like, what? And she said, I'm just reading this book by, I think it was Rick Renner. I'm just reading this book by Rick Renner. Are you ready for a spiritual promotion? <laughs> and, you know, shortly after that, they became elders in our church. So <laughs> it was definitely an accurate word. So I was like, whoa, maybe I have this prophetic gift. I'm not sure. But anyway, so that was the first time. And then um, healing. I want to talk about discernment of spirits first, before healing. Um, I think I've told the story before here, but I used to work on a medical floor at St. Joe's Hospital, in, again in Maine. And like when you're on a medical floor, sometimes it's end of life. And so there would be these... <laughs> I'd be working as a nurse, and all of a sudden, I would feel like a change in the atmosphere. I would, I would feel actually that it went from from um, light to dark, or dark to light, and I felt the presence of either demons or angels. And then I started to realize, whoa, it was usually if someone their life if someone was dying, then if they weren't saved, like it was the demons that were coming to pick them up. If they were saved, it was this glorious presence of the Lord that was coming. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this thing is real. This, you know, like, and so I would definitely be like praying. And sometimes I would even go into people's rooms and I would just grab their hands and pray for foxhole salvations. You know? But anyway, we can change the atmosphere because of the presence of God in us. Like, I think all of these giftings come through worshiping God. Like, the gift of healing is... Like, if you're worshiping God, if you're worshiping God and you're reading your Bible, then the gift of healing, I think, is just going to come. Like, because it's, we're carrying His presence. That's what changes the atmosphere. That's what's going to save someone if they're going to hell. It's all the presence of God. So, I guess that's all I want to say. At healing, like, I feel like it's not only your faith, but it's their faith. And sometimes, I don't know what it is when we go to a different country, <laughs> that there's more miracles. Uh, but I remember going to Mali, West Africa, and I remember praying for this blind man, man, and then all of a sudden, he was like, oh, and you're wearing this color skirt. Oh, and your shirt is this color. You know, and he was totally healed of his blindness right there. <laughs> it was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, so cool. You know, um, I've seen like a tumor fall off in somebody's hand when she was praying for somebody in Bulgaria. Like, I saw people got, get out of wheelchairs in Bulgaria. You know, it was just like, whoa. You know, so I don't know why we don't see these miracles in America. I mean, we do. We do. But it feels like it's God wants to show off or something. Like, God wants to show off for these people. And they have, it's like they have a faith. And there's no sin of, like, familiarity. Like, you know, like, sometimes if I probably if I go pray for somebody here, they're like, oh, 
It's only little Terry. You know? Like, but it's God, it's not me. So I think we need to realize that it's God. It's not, it's not the person. I mean, it could be, you could be sensing that the person isn't carrying anything, then there's a problem. You know, but if they're carrying the Holy Spirit. So it's a lot, it's a lot about worship, and it's a lot about the Word of God, and it's a lot about the blood of Jesus, and it's not about you, and it's not about me. And I think that's the most important thing. Amen. The sermon. I know different people have different ways. I, I, like I see Randy Clark when certain people come up and he, he um, evidently feels aches and pains in his body, or maybe you're familiar with that, and then they call out something. And, and I, I, I really haven't experienced that. I don't know what that's about. Or maybe I have, and I haven't picked up on, on the clue. But, but I do have some of the things that have happened to me that have taught me one little lesson. Oftentimes, if you're working in a specific area, a season in your life, you become aware of things that are going on in people's lives um, that they don't tell you, including their thoughts. Like Jesus would be delivering a, a message or he'd be doing, in the process of doing something, and people would be thinking something in their heart. The scriptures talk about that. And suddenly, he would talk to them about what they were thinking in their heart. That's called discernment. You're aware that something's going on. Sometimes as I've reached out to people and I've been involved in things, it's like I can see inside of them what God's purpose is for them and, and the giftings that they have. I don't know how to explain that, how you see that, I don't know. There's another thing that's happened to me. Well, for a season in my life, my wife and I used to take in, you know, people who were drunk in the street and just like skid row people, and we'd bring them into the house. And we, but we did it a lot. We were with people like that a lot. And suddenly, I started smelling alcohol in different places. And I, I realized uh, it wasn't just them drinking. I realized that there was a spirit. And I can smell that spirit. That's called discernment. There are times on places somebody will come in. Before they get near me, I mean, just walk in the door. Before they get near me, um, I, I smell this, like, I guess it sounds strange, but I don't care. I can smell this stuff, and I know that, that person has a problem with alcohol. No question. Some other things happen. Even tonight, I'm a little shy to say this because I don't know whether this is true or not, but tonight, while we're here, distinctly, I started smelling, uh, what do they call those things that people put in their mouths? It has pouches of tobacco. I don't know what you call them. No. Some of them, and some of them, like have this mint kind of flavor to them. Or I don't know whether they have it, but they smell like a mint. But it's a smell. It's a mixture smell of that and whatever the tobacco thing is. As I was sitting here, and it could be someone in here, it could just be people who come in and out of this place. I don't know. But I was here, and suddenly it's like somebody was talking to me, and there was this breath of this mint tobacco kept coming on me. And I came up here to take communion, and just as I hit here, I started smelling it again. And, and so the Lord spoke to me, and I don't know whether it has to do with here or not, but I do know that that, um, that kind of discernment, if it's in your life, means that you're, you're sensing a bondage that somebody's involved in. And as soon as you sense it, that means the power is there. You have to follow the Lord's leading, but the power is there to set people free. And so tonight, I just want to say that what I smell, whether you have problems with tobacco or not, I don't know. And I could be way off, but I do know that there are habits people are enslaved to. And that's as much of a bondage as anything else. And so I'm aware that God wants people to be set free from things that are nagging them and keeping them. Let me, uh, we're almost out of time here. Fred, come on up. Uh, there's about discernment. We say this little thing. Discernment begins with light and darkness. Every gift has its beginning place. It starts small. Are you with me? And it, as you practice the gift, it begins to unwrap. Are you with me? And it goes deeper and it gets more specific. Okay? 
What Harry's telling you is not a beginning place for the gift of discernment. You can tell he's been operating in it for quite a Just hearing that, I can tell you he's been operating in that for a while. But when you begin a gift of discernment, you can discern light and darkness just like that. That's good. Are you with me? Light and darkness. That's where it begins. And as you begin to practice it, the Lord starts going more into detail of the light or going more into detail of the darkness. Amen? Amen. Uh, my brother and friends over here, and we're out of time. We're going to do a little time of discernment. We're going to release you if you need to go. And then people that want a impartation of a gift that you're hearing about and that you don't have that you would like, we want to take time to pray. But I want to end with the gift of faith. Okay. The gift of faith. Um, when I was a little kid, I would pray, I would read these Bible stories. And uh, I would just accept them. I never had a doubt that, that they were true. And uh, I believed that, you know, the story of Goliath. And uh, I was a feisty, uh, fiery little little kid. They all had ADHD in a day. And, uh, <laughs> and um, you know, I used to fight my older brother, four years older. I, I'd go and fight his battles because he was a librarian. I was the number two kid. But uh, I just had faith, you know, that God was protecting me and, and God was going to use me. And I, I just don't know where that, you know, it, it was coming from him. Um, I started, um, after I was uh, baptized in the Holy Spirit and, and started uh, seeing things in the, in the spiritual realm happening in my life, there was at one point where I, I the first thing that I, um, prison ministry that I ever did is I was a work release program. And I would pick the guys up at the prison and take them out and uh, build a house. And it happened to be the monsoon season. It was raining every single day. If you know anything about wood and water, they don't get along too well. They usually warps the wood. And we, we only had the, the the foundation laid, we couldn't even get the, 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 the boards up, and it was just raining, and I'm sitting there, I'm paying guys, and um, righteous, <laughs> I'll call it righteous anger, welled up within me, and I just looked up to where the, 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 the rain was coming from, and I just pointed at it, and I said, I rebuke you in the name of the Lord Jesus. I forbid you to rain on this house. <laughs> and four prisoners were standing there, and the rain stopped. And four, there was like somebody put a finger in the sky, and it opened up. And it rained on that side of the house, and it rained on that side of the house. And I turned around and said, What are you waiting for? Get to work! <laughs> That was just one of, of, of many kinds of things where I just believed that what God says he's going to do. Yes, and he would do you know, miraculous things. Um, I, I was translated once. And I wish it was, you know, he took me into the mission fields, into the dark, deepest, darkest parts of Africa or something like that. It wasn't anything glorious like that at all. I was on my way to Pittsburgh, and I was an, over an hour late. And the Bible says, praise God in all things. And uh, it, would, I, it must have been winter because it was getting dark real, real early. This was back, oh my goodness, in the 70s. So um, I'm just praising the Lord. And praising the Lord. I said, if I'm going to be late, I'm going to be late, but I'm going to praise the Lord while I'm going. So... I'm praising the Lord, and I have my eyes off the road every once in a while. One, I keep one hand on the wheel. And uh, back in the old days, they had single numbers with all the exits. Now it's the mile numbers. And Pittsburgh was exit six. Okay? So I'm praising the Lord, exit 30, somewhere Somerset, right? And I'm praising the Lord, and I look down, exit six. Whoa, wait a minute. Exit 30, exit 6. So what, what just happened? I pull in an hour early. Oh. Oh. 
I did the math later because I, I kept questioning myself. I said, this, you know, there's something screwy here. You know, maybe I just you know misread my watch or something. But I would have had it have been going way, way over 200 miles an hour. You know, it was impossible. So you know, there's just all these little vignettes where um, I, I just keep believing that God's going to do things, and I've, I've always said to the Lord, you know, I believe that you, you know, you can raise people from the dead. And I said, if you ever want to do that, Lord, I'm, I'm ready. I believe that He'll probably use me to raise the dead someday. Amen. Amen. Okay. Amen. <laughs> sure. Sure. Amen. And so, and we wanted to give you a little, you know, people that are working in these different gifts and what they look like. You know, I work in the Word of Wisdom, and the Word of Wisdom is knowing the purposes of God. God will talk to me, and, you know, I've even, uh, in the process of writing a book, and I've done a sermon with Healing Tree about some of the purposes of God, and God revealed things, and it was so crazy, the thing, like, my friends, you know, and, and I think Harry can testify, and Terry, you start thinking that it's crazy stuff. You know what I mean? Like you can't even share these things with people. You know what I mean? And then, but I wrote it down and I started doing, I started going and digging things up and I found out everything the Lord told me, I found to be true. I found stuff. He answered these things and it took me five years to dig up the materials on some of the things he talked to me, but he was telling me the purposes of God. Are you with me? What, what he's doing in this season, in this time. And so uh, that's the word of wisdom. Um, he talked about, she talked about discerning the spirits, the gift of healing. You know, the gift of, let me say something about the gift of healing. There's different kinds of healing, okay? Whenever the church of Jesus Christ gets together and pray, people can get healed. The Bible talks about elders laying hands on people and people getting healed, okay? The, now, I'm going to say something controversial, and I really prayed over there about whether to say it, but I'm going to give you a, a belief of mine. I believe that anyone who ever asked Jesus for healing got healed. Absolutely correct. That's true. That true. Okay, now there's now people use this one scripture. It said they he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Exactly. And there are people that believe that because they didn't believe, he was still laying hands and doing stuff and it wasn't working. No, and I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna tell you this prophetically. The Lord told me he said this to me, I never laid hands on anybody and they didn't get healed. Because of their own belief, they didn't come to the meeting. Yes, there you go. Mm -hmm. He goes, I went to meetings and no one showed up. Yep. Scriptures say that not many people were hit, that he wasn't able to do many mighty works except, Scripture says, except that he healed some. Right, yeah. So my belief on that is if you have, I believe, and this is a controversial thought, but I'm going to give it to you anyway. I believe if you have the Holy Spirit gift of healing, truly, you're going to lay hands on somebody and they're going to be healed. Now let me say this. Anyone can pray over somebody and they get healed. That doesn't mean you have the gift of healing. When the body comes together, you can lay hands on them. I've seen healings, been a part of it, but I have not yet to do it, but I, but I'm also there are people, and I believe this with every fiber of my being. In this day and age, if you hear about India, if you hear about Africa, you hear about people that truly have the gift of healing, and they'll tell you when they lay hands on somebody and pray, they get healed. Are you with me? There's a different level. So let me say this what about these different gifts. All of us here have faith. The gift of faith is at a different level. Everyone here can pray for somebody and they can get healed. The gift of healing is at a different level. Are you with me? And what we do is, the church, unfortunately, in this age, I feel they lower the level so more people can have it. But, but what Harry said earlier is important. Stick with Scripture. Don't try to make it something that's not in Scripture. Are you with me? And know that the Bible says everyone that Jesus prayed, by the disciples too, that when they laid hands on them, they got healed. Are you with me? And then people are trying to come up with this crazy doctrine in our day. Well, that was the apostles. You see, what Jesus said, many, you're going to do greater works than I did. Are you with me? And uh, so I, I honestly believe that. So, well, was this okay? Was this an okay subject tonight, guys? 
By the way, we could have done this here for like six weeks or nine weeks, and I know that we went through it kind of quick, but I didn't want to, uh, I, wanted, I felt the Lord wanted us to talk about this, and I wanted to give you a chance to do that. So I wanted, we're going to end, and we're going to have a time of, of fellowship, but before we do, anybody who would like to come up and receive some prayer for any of the gifts that you want, I'm going to have some of the leaders come up here and pray over you. So any, any of the nine gifts that you heard that you are not experiencing yet, and you want that gift, you said, man, I want that. We want to have a time of impartation, and we want to pray for you. So if you would please come up now to receive prayer, and we will lay hands on you and just walk in faith and believe in God. Amen? You don't have to. We don't have to do that. We can go right into the fall, but we want to have a time of impartation. Amen. So I'm going to I'm going to pray. Before we do that, one last thing. If you close your eyes and stretch your hand out to wherever you think Abby and Jim Abel this are, I want to pray for them. Father God, we love our leaders, and we pray for the, them and their team, Lord God. Bless Abby Abel and bless Jim and Abby together. Bless the work that they are doing, Lord God. We love them. We send our love to them. We send our prayers to them, Father God. And Holy Ghost, we ask you to just light her up, Father, and him up. And may there be miracles coming from their ministry and workings and healings and deliverances. And just bless, bless, bless them. Bring them back safely. Give them traveling mercies, Lord God. Watch over them physically, emotionally, spiritually, in every way. Keep them safe and well. And we just bless them in Jesus' name. You have a word. Um, we were singing this song, More of You, Lord. Okay? And it was both two ways he was singing to us and we were singing to him. And during that time, God spoke to me and said, there's some people that go to the seashore that just want to breathe the salt air, sit on the beach, and maybe get their toes wet and, and dabble. He said, there's other people that go to get in. He said, there are some people that are having trouble getting in. Don't resist. Get rid of the fear. Fear is not of God. You know, this is all good stuff. Receive it. Open up. Receive. <laughs> so, we're going to end. <laughs> it's called so, baptism. <laughs> so, Father God, bless all the folks. Lord, bless what they do. Bless this whole week. And give us a good, if we're going to do some impartation, just bless it. Touch the people. Holy Spirit, you are here. We know that you love them. We know that you want to take them into the deep end. Bless all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. If you want some impartation, come on out. Real, real quick. Next week, Silas Titus will be with us. And Johnny Thomas will be leading worship. We're from Cyprus right now. So.